Hey guys, this is Johnny with Top Speed Auto Care or TSEC here in Houston. Um, as you can see, I have some wiring in my hands. We're working on a new project here at the shop. It's a 73 F100 with the Ranger trim package. Uh, we've uh, actually gotten the job doing all of the electrical work and we'll be installing a brand new 390 FE engine from H Squared Racing Engines in the next few days. Uh, we're just trying to get everything sorted out under the hood so that we can actually move on with the engine install and button up the wiring as we go. I wanted to take a second to kind of say that we're changing the format and the way we do videos and we're, we're going to start trying to do better breakdowns on the builds that we're doing here just to kind of give you guys a better idea of what it is we do and the extents that we go to on some of these. This particular vehicle uh, we've been requested to make the wiring as clean as possible just due to the amount of money that's been spent on the heart and soul of the truck which is the engine. We've been requested to keep the wiring that's visible to a very, very minimum. And the way everything's working out with this particular paintless harness, with very little modification, we should be able to hide all but maybe about, I would say 12 to 18 inches of wiring harness under the hood. And other than that, all you'll see is what the bare essentials are to make the engine run. There again, we're changing the format of the videos a little bit and we're gonna start incorporating some of our top speed tech tips. Uh, I know a lot of you guys like to do this kind of stuff at home enjoyment of doing it yourself and getting your hands on it and being able to step back and go look what I did. Uh, some of the things that we're going to cover along the way are going to help you, one, to do your job easier, and two, when you're done, you'll have a much better, much more finished looking product. Quick second to kind of go over how we're doing a lot of the electrical connections on this. Uh, this one is pretty simple. Uh, there is some heat shrink tubing involved with the connections. Most of these are a crimp style connection. Obviously, you know, you have to strip the wire back to be able to crimp the connection together. The strippers I use are pretty well automated. You pretty much start with the end that's insulated all the way. You put it in there, you squeeze the handle, and it pulls off the correct amount of insulation for the gauge that you're working with. Um, this, the crimpers that I use are an aviation style. They give you a much better crimp. The tension on the crimp is much better. You have a harder time getting loose connections that way. The particular style crimp connectors that I like to use, uh, they come in various colors, uh, depending on gauge again. They have um, a very short piece of heat shrink tubing on them. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide it in until the insulation touches the metal sleeve on the inside. You take your aviation style crimpers and the, the way you can tell the difference between the aviation style and just the regular crimpers that you can buy at AutoZone or O'Reilly is these where you actually do the crimp have a sort of a U shape on one side and a notch shape on the other so that when you squeeze them together it actually gives you a much better tighter crimp that you cannot pull apart without excessive force and basically what you're going to do is again on the other side slide it until the insulation touches the metal sleeve on the inside and then you just crimp the other side like so and you can it requires a little bit of strength to crimp it a little bit better that way but when you're done they're a lot harder to pull apart this eliminates a lot of your loose connections that you can gain from just the regular squeeze type crimp connectors. Once you're to that point, all you have to do from there is heat it slightly and the blue that you see will actually shrink down and seal tight against the wiring. That will prevent moisture and dirt and debris from getting in there corroding from the connection and again causing a bad connection on your electrical circuits. Um, on a primitive or early style setup like this, that's a very acceptable way to crimp your wire connections. On your later model stuff that's all computer controlled, I am absolutely against crimping wires together like that, even with heat shrink tubing. I much prefer actually soldering wires together and then using heat shrink tubing. The solder itself gives you an excellent connection, and there again, you can't pull it apart. And it allows for a little bit more flexibility, especially in the smaller gauge wires on the more advanced computer those connections are absolutely critical. Okay, we were discussing that we were going to be updating the instrumentation of this truck. Um, we found through 
Dakota Digital, an, an amazing instrument cluster for this truck. But I wanted to take a second and kind of explain the technology that this truck used in 1973. We have a cable-driven speedometer, uh, mostly dummy lights, and a couple of sensors that really rely on an analog signal. Analog is great for the 70s. Here we are in 2018, analog's not so great. So, we have moved on to a Dakota Digital cluster that looks amazingly similar to what came out of the truck. We have updated to a digitally driven speedometer. This one incorporates an actual tachometer, which was a very, very not so common option on the 73 cluster. And we have all of our gauges conveniently located in one section. And this is going to look absolutely amazing in the truck. This one incorporates basically its own control module that every signal comes into and then it's transmitted from that module to the cluster via a CAT5 cable. Hey guys, welcome to the cab of our uh, 73 Ford we're working on here. A couple of things I wanted to mention. Uh, this, we've talked about the painless kit and being aero specific for this truck. A couple of the cool features that come along with it, uh, they send you these tags to uh, label your circuits. Uh, for, for somebody that hasn't done this too many times, these come in really handy. Even for someone like myself that's done many, many of these, they still come in very handy. When you have your harness laid out in the spaghetti bowl fashion you see here, it, uh, it helps you kind of, at a quick glance, determine which circuit goes where. Another handy little piece that they give you, now say you're doing an actual, I want to say close to by the numbers restoration. This actually, this kit actually comes with an installation manual for the harness. Um, I've been a big fan of Painless products for a long time for that very reason. I've used several different harnesses over the years, but I've always came back to the Painless system because as you flip through here, it goes step by step and, and also breaks it down section by section. And when you get further back into the back of this manual, it actually tells you what circuit goes where, what color the wire is, what the number of the wire is, and everything else so that there's little to no confusion over these things. Uh, as I was mentioning, with the Dakota Digital cluster that we're putting in, it has its own control module, uh, which you see mounted here. All of the painless harness ends of the module have been connected and ready to go. And you see all of our various harnesses laid out, like, you know, this is our turn signal harness here. This will go to the wiper switch. You know, we got an ignition switch. I mean, we still have wires going everywhere. Don't be discouraged. This seems like a huge and very daunting task. But if you just take your time, think it through, it'll go just as smooth as you can imagine. Um, another quick little tech tip that we have that makes your life a lot easier as well. I personally like to reuse as many of the factory connectors as I can. Say we get this truck finished in two years from now, the headlight switch goes out. Well, the customer may not bring it to me. He may go, you know, it's just a headlight switch. I can fix that. If you just have certain wires put on certain pins of the switch, unless he takes a picture and draws out a map and everything else, it takes three times longer in prep work, it's just going to be a huge pain. So I like to reuse these connectors as much as humanly possible. So, in order to do that without damaging the connector housing itself, we here at TSAC use a terminal tool kit. These make it much easier to get the connectors out of the housing. Uh, they do less damage to the housing. I mean, sure, you could go at it with paper clips and pocket screwdrivers and whatnot. These take a lot of the time and a lot of the aggravation out of it. These are, you know, these are a Matco brand, but there are, you can buy these almost anywhere now. They're not nearly as exclusive to get your hands on as most people think. Welcome to the back of the truck, guys. Uh, we're pretty much gonna wrap up our electrical overview of the truck. Uh, there's a couple of last minute things I want to mention about this. Um, as you can see, the bed of the truck is you know, full of the parts that are still to be installed on the truck. One of the things that I wanted to go over with you guys while we're still on the subject of electrical is we're going to be using a radiator, an aluminum radiator with a dual electric fan setup 
and we're going to integrate this particular dual fan relay setup into the painless system that we're installing along with you know the module for the Dakota digital dash and that kind of stuff basically this unit will tie into the cooling system of the truck and also the wiring that we're installing now uh, it's a, a totally passive system you don't have to do anything to activate the fan it actually comes on at uh, what, 185 at 185 degrees Fahrenheit the fan will come on by itself once it cools the coolant and the system back down to right around 170 degrees it'll actually cut the, the fans off as well uh, this truck's not going to have AC on it at the moment but there is also the option here for when the compressor comes on to automatically kick on the cooling fans as well now just to kind of give you guys a little bit of an overview of what's coming up in the mechanical section of this build that we're working on. Uh, I've kind of touched base on some of the parts in the back of the truck. You can see we have the exhaust. We have the freshly built transmission that's ready to go in. Uh, somewhere next to it is the brand new saw converter. We have the, the drive shaft's been reconditioned and ready to go in. All of the parts have been cleaned up and painted and ready to go and we'll cover that more in depth as we get started with the actual mechanical reassembly of the truck tuned to our channel we're actually working on a cam install on a charger that you can see here next to the to the truck and we also have an Acura turbo build coming in the very near future and we really look forward to bringing you guys some really good information on that uh, this is going to be uncharted territory for us here at top speed we haven't done one yet so this ought to be a lot of fun so we're going to kind of wrap up the electrical segment of this build video if you have any particular questions or anything that you want to know about specifically pertaining to you either the wiring or any of the mechanical reassembly of the truck or if you just have a, a specific question in general about how to do something please feel free to drop a comment below and please do subscribe to our channel and we look forward to bringing you more videos along the way with the mechanical reassembly of the truck and all of the, the good times to come with putting this truck back together.